design paradigm. Usually you only get to two, pick two, but at Alchemy we get to pick all three. And one of the ways we are able to do that is through those sort of prefab method. I think what I wanted to start out with was a little bit of a preview of what, what prefab's done in the last maybe 100 years. It's sort of always been chased after by architects and designers. In fact, in 1908, Sears came out with a home that you basically order from a truck, shows up via crane, or shows up via railroad car, and basically yourself and your neighbors put it together. To, uh, this guy runs about four grand, which is right just, just under what the average home cost was. Um, and then in 1940, a guy named came out with the Lustrin House, uh, which is basically, he sold about 2,500 of these guys in 48. Uh, these guys are all steel, and it was built just after sort of a, a sort of a, let's say, drive towards doing sort of low maintenance house. These are all steel; they're enameled. Um, and then in '72, I'm going a little quick, I guess. Uh, in '72, we got the capsule tower. You guys all seen this kind of thing. Uh, these guys run about $15 a night when they first were open. It's a little tiny room, basically just one pod per person kind of thing. Usually geared towards males for some reason. <laughs> and then in uh, 2003, we were approached by a client that had sort of a really limited budget, and it was basically the end of winter, and she said, well, can I get a house by spring? And we said, well, I don't know about that. But we said we could take a look at it. So we said, let's see if we can make this work. And in order to make it work, we said, you know, it's just a small house. It's a little tiny place. Maybe we can actually just build it ourselves in a warehouse. So we did the foundation in the fall basically rented some warehouse space and three of us built it in the factory and then the idea was to deliver it in the spring. Um, and it worked so well that we sort of started this we house thing, which is basically a drive towards smaller footprint homes. And here's a shot where it's on the truck actually running to her site. Um, so the idea is that we could come up with a system that has flexibility in it that still allows the consumer to sort of interface with us and say, this is what our needs are, it's a smaller design thing, and still have a play between both of us. Um, and still deliver a high quality product that's both simple and elegant at the same time. Not necessarily geared towards maybe people at, at poverty level incomes at this point, but I think the ideas that are sort of existing in what we do could sort of translate to that further on down the road. Um, and then after the success of this project, we started to look at other ways that we could sort of piggyback on other, on other structures. For example, these are shots taken inside of a typical modular home factory. Basically, these guys put together a manufactured homes, so they're like basically trailer park kind of homes. Um, so we wanted to leverage what these guys were doing and put it to work for us. Because basically, the building parts are all the same. So we said, wait a sec, we can take what these guys are doing. And then on the other side, there's basically what the car manufacturers are doing. Here's a shot in a in a Volkswagen car plant. This is their newest Faden car plant. I don't know if anybody's familiar with it, but it's like a dentist's office in there. So these guys are using technology that's like 50 years in front of the building industry to leverage that against being able to do super high quality things. Um, so there's a few projects we've been able to produce this. We've got 12 projects in the ground. This one just went into uh, Marfa, Texas about three months ago. There's a shot with a crane setting it on the site. So, while we're building the house, we're also putting in the foundation at the same time, so we compress the building schedule. This, this house actually just went in uh, Cedar Avenue. It's a small landscape firm. Uh, Phillips Garden, maybe you guys know about it. It's at 26th and Cedar. And we just installed this guy about a month and a half ago. Um, so it's down the road if anybody wants to take a look at it. So we're able to put together sort of a compressed schedule and basically build these things indoors, which takes all the sort of equations about whether people show up or not, or all the weather things outside of the equation to build sort of, you know, affordable modernism at this point. Maybe not necessarily affordable architecture, but at this point, it seems like the goals could sort of align. This is another house we just said about, actually we said the day before we set the one in Cedar, at Cedar Riverside. This is in Pennsylvania. So not only are we doing work sort of in our backyard, but we're also like, looking at what we can do across the nation. Right now we've got about six factory partners all over the US. Um, we've just got a new factory out in California which supplies basically the bulk of our California market out there. Um, and basically, if you looked at our map for deliveries, it's basically all on the east, all on the, east, all on the west coast. So there's, there's a little bit of a design trend there towards who's asking for sort of modern architecture. Uh, but we get calls from just about everywhere, so you can see how they overlap between what we're doing and sort of 
what some of the super affordable people are doing coincide. So we actually did a house out in Montana, and out in Montana the sort of, uh, let's see, uh, <laughs> the density is just a little bit different out there. So this is sort of the planning tool that they use most of the time out there. So we said, you know, if we can make it work on a small scale, what happens when you sort of scale this guy up into sort of medium density, high density units? Maybe it was single family sort of studio apartments mixed with some two bedroom, three bedroom, multi-story pieces. So we developed sort of a system that's both modular together that can be combined, combined easily enough that you could sort of stack them, move things around. Um, for example, this is a, a thing sort of sliding down that scale and just, this guy's actually for a student worker housing up by Grand Marais. So there's a huge need up there just because of the resort community. We were contacted by a woman here in St. Paul who said, you know, I really want to put up this place that's basically student worker housing in the summer and then in the winter we rent it out. So we're basically trying to leverage all the existing infrastructure, the modular home factories, and able to do some things that we just can't do necessarily. So this house we did in St. or it's actually near Clearwater. We built it at SIP panels, which are not necessarily 100% prefabricated, but the panels are cut inside a factory and then it's assembled on site. Well, that was quick. Um, <laughs> so you can sort of shorten that span and put things together a little bit closer than you normally could. Um, so if you're out there and you're sort of putting the, the existing infrastructure together with what we can do and leveraging those two guys together, you know, we can do amazing things. Maybe even get a little bit closer to that sort of original design paradigm, fast, cheap, and good. That's about it. <laughs>